Hello, Keith Rucker here, VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on our metal planer restoration, and I got one more pulley to make, and I think we can put the belts on this machine, fire up, and take her for a test spin. And this is gonna be the second pulley that we need to drive the oiler system, the lubricator system on the machine. And uh, I've got a kind of a sketch drawn up of what I wanna make. I've got a piece of material. This time I know for a fact I got a cast iron Durabar uh, and a continuous cast product. Got a disc of it here, a little bit more than what I need, but uh, we're gonna make it out of that material and uh, hopefully get this machine with all the belts and everything on it here, or at least all the pulleys for the belts on it uh, by the end of this episode so that we can get those belts on there and fire this machine up finally. So let me show you what we got to make and we'll get started making it. So just a little chicken scratch drawing here with uh, a cross-sectional view of the pulley I need to make, five inches in diameter. We gotta put a half inch hole through it. The hub I'm gonna make about a one inch, um, one inch uh, wide there. Make the rib on the inside about three eighths of an inch thick and uh, we'll crown the pulleys on either end. Um, nothing, not much on this drawing is anything, if any critical measurements other than the bore and even the, the outside diameter is just a rough diameter, uh, but we're gonna try to get it close to that as we can. And to make this out of again, we got our big old chunk of cast iron Durabar here, which I'm gonna take over to the lathe and we'll put it in there and get it going. We've got our uh, block of iron over here in the lathe. I turned my jaws around backwards so that we could grip it on the outside here and uh, that's gonna work out just fine. Now this block is a little over two inches thick. I need for the part to be about an inch and a quarter thick. So we've got to cut about three quarters of an inch, face it off of this. Um, wish I could have gotten that cut a little bit thinner, but it is what it is. We're just gonna turn it into chips. Uh, I think I'm gonna start by just facing and probably take it down to about an inch and a half on the diam the thickness rather, and we'll take the rest of it off the other side, but I need to thin it down. So we've got a cutter in here. Let's just start facing and get it down where it needs to be. All right. I'll zero that out on my digital readout where I can kind of keep track of where I'm going and we'll take about 20 thousandths off of that thickness. It's just gonna take time. Uh, I got a lot of material to cut off, so we'll bring you guys back here in a little bit, but um, like I said, we wanna get about half an inch of material faced off of that. Uh, then we'll start working on that profile. Got my front faced off here. We've still got a little bit of thickness to take off the other side, but that's fine. But what I've done right now is I've kind of laid out a couple of circles on there, rough circles. These are just kind of some guidelines for me to go on. And what I need to do is this outside circle will be the outside diameter. You can see we've got a good bit of material. We're going to have to cut off the outside. In between these two marks here, I'm just wanting to re remove some material and kind of make a web down in there in the center of this thing so that uh, uh, we just basically get some weight out of there and uh, just kind of make the, the pulley look a little bit more, uh, look a little bit better than what it would. Now to do it, I'm actually gonna use a boring bar. And the reason I'm gonna use a boring bar, and I may even still have some trouble with this, but if you try to come here with a regular lathe cutter, a regular lathe cutter is made for cutting on the outside. And a lot of times you don't get the clearance on this tool, particularly on this inside corner, uh, it'll drag and hit the bottom of your, your tool down here where it's not cutting at. Uh, but a boring bar is designed to do an inside cut, so it's a little bit more well suited for this. Now I've got it cocked at a funny angle, roughly where I got half of my angle on either end of this. And uh, I'm just trying to get some material removed out of there basically right now. We will go in there and, and cut those, those uh, inside pieces here in just a little bit. But right now we're just gonna come in here and start trying to remove some of that out. And uh, again, using this board bar, so let's, let's uh, try it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of come over here and uh, 
It's gonna put me some better marks in there. They run a little bit more true to work off of. The next thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna to touch it and I'm gonna zero out my digital readout right there. That'll just kind of give me a depth where I can keep track of how deep I'm cutting. And I'm gonna go back there. We're gonna feed in about 15 thousandths probably, which is about right there. I'm just turning this by hand right now. All right. Go in some more. gonna see if I got a different insert. That one there is kind of cutting kind of hard. Uh, I think that was just the insert that was in that tool. Let me see if I got one I can swap it out with or turn that one around. Well, I think that's a lot better. I changed that insert out. I actually had to grind a little bit of relief on it to make it work just right. And it's working good cutting in, not so much coming back towards me, but I think we can work with this. So uh, let me, uh, Come in here, we're gonna take it down. We'll go to about, a, about 120 thousandths uh, on my digital readout, which should give me about a 20, 25 thousandths uh, depth of cut. Right about there. I'm gonna lock my cross slide, or, or my carriage rather, and it will just feed in. up to that profile in the bottom. Rinse and repeat. I'm just gonna keep doing that till we get down to our depth and how deep do I need to take that? According to my calculations, I need to go down to point 0.3125 on the uh, digital readout, which means I got about 200 more thousandths to go. I'm about 125 right now. We plow in, I'm gonna go to about 150 thousandths deep. 41.50 right there. Take her right out. Right 
Echo 3125, which will be our final pass here, which will be, let's see, there's 310, one, two, five, all right. This will be my last pass, we should be to depth. That's five sixteenths of an inch deep on that uh, inside part there. Recessed in. And I'm just gonna pull back out nice and slow. Make sure we got a nice finish in there. That should do it. Yeah, that doesn't look bad at all. All right. As long as we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, face off this service surface. We touch off and my zero's still good. I need to go in uh, 62 thousandths on this. This just needs to be a little bit smaller. Uh, then the outside hub, I'll just do about half of that. Okay, well, we'll do about 20 thousandths per pass. All right, let me go to 50. Sixty-two and a half on this one, right there. That inside hub uh, thickness is going to be about an eighth of an inch smaller than the outside diameter. And I think we got the inside pretty well profiled on this one. Uh, Just facing that, cleaning it up a little bit. All right. Just gonna use a little bit of emery cloth here and soften those uh, edges. They're kind of sharp right now. Up next, I'm going to come in here and go ahead and drill my hole through the center. This is going to be a half inch diameter hole uh, to fit up on that pump. I just want to put a little uh, dimple there in the middle to get my drill bit started. That's good right there. So next, we're going to drill this as a 31 64 drill bit, one size under half inch, and I'll finish it off with a reamer. Uh, to get it the size. Got a half inch reamer in there. I slowed my chuck down. Um, I am gonna use a little bit of oil on that. We should be right to size. I'm wanting to turn this part around and finish the other side and the outside diameter. And I just made a quick little uh, mandrel to turn this on. Now, this part is not keyed. So the only thing that's really gonna be able to hold it is just sandwiching it uh, on there. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to turn this. I'm probably gonna have to make some little bit lighter cuts to get that outside diameter. But I want it to be turning on the, uh, the part there or on the spindle so that it's running true to the center. So we're just gonna put that on there like such. 
And next step here is uh, to turn the outside diameter. Uh, and then once I get that OD turned, uh, I'll probably chuck it back up on the OD and we'll do the, the profile and faces side. But first let's get that turned down and uh, where the outside diameter is true to the, the, the hole that we drilled through there that we'll be rotating on. First pass, I'm just barely kissing it because I know we got some irregularities in there. And I just want to get something known that I can work off of. I'm going to put a little shield up over here to keep these uh, cast iron chips from hitting me in the face. All right, we'll take about another 25 thou and cut across there. I am taking a little bit lighter passes than what I would normally do because I don't have anything keyed on that shaft and we got a lot of uh, torque out there just because of the diameter compared to that inside diameter. So we're just going to take our time and uh, cut that OD down to five inches. I'm taking about 30 thousandths uh, per pass. We might try 40 thou and see if we can get away with it. Five inches, 810, we'll just call it. And I'm gonna put that in my digital readout. 5.810. So we've been whittling away at my part here and I want to get a good measurement here. We are at five inches and looks like about 67 thousandths. 5.067. So we got about 67 thousandths to come off of that and we should be at five inch mark. So uh, I've been taking 25 thou per pass here. Again, just uh, taking it nice, slow and easy, not trying to put too much tool pressure uh, since that's not a keyed part. So far it's uh, done just fine, just from the tension of being tightened up on that bolt. Um, but that's because I've been taking fairly light passes. This uh, outside diameter is not super critical. I got 17 thou according to my thing up there. I'm going to take about 10. And I'm probably going to just leave it right here. I should have about 7 thou to go. But uh, I'm going to crown this fully. That'll be my last operation. And uh, we'll hit that final number there at the very end. Or get something close to it. Touch the back side of this with the back side of that insert to put a little bit of a chamfer on there. Uh, I'm not worried about the front right now because we got some more facing to do there. Looks good. And let's check our diameter here. 
Yeah, I'm about about five over five inches, which is going to be fine. All right, we're going to flip this. Well, actually, we're going to take it out of off of this here, get it chucked up in the lathe running true, and then work on uh, this face over here. So let me get set up for that, and we'll be back. So I got a four jaw chuck on here. We're gripping it on the outside. I flipped my jaws around to do that. Uh, we got everything up against this back jaw. So this side should be parallel to the front side. And then uh, I put it in the four jaw because I knew if I put it in the three jaw, it'd probably have a tiny amount of run out and I could dial that in with the four jaw. And if you look on the indicator, yeah, we're less than a thou run out. And I'm not even gonna call that run out. There's actually a little dip in here where my cutter came back across it didn't quite come out and I think most of that jumping around is just uh, that but we're we're definitely within less than a thou there uh, so that should relate to my center hub also so next step is we're gonna face this side get it to its thickness which is gonna be inch and a quarter and then go ahead and put that feature in it like we're on the other side kind of take that center part out just to reduce some weight so uh, Let's, uh, let's get my boring bar set back up over here like we did before and we'll get to it. All right, here we go again. Uh, start by touching off here and we're just gonna feed in a little bit and start working on facing that off. start here by I'll roll that around where I'm not measuring that little area that it didn't cut I want to get a good uh, thickness on this excuse my dial calipers we're at one inch 400 uh, 482 one inch 482 put that in my digital readout 1.482 so what I'm going to do is just keep track of this I want to get this down to, what is it, an inch and a quarter, so 1.250. So we're just going to go ahead and face that material off right now. We got about a quarter of an inch, uh, more or less. And we'll just uh, get it down where it needs to be. We'll do about 25,000 at a time. Got some lines on there again to just kind of help me visually see where I'm at. These uh, ex these are kind of the extents of where I want to go, and they are there's nothing precision about these at all. I'm gonna come in here till I touch off. I'm gonna zero that out on my Z axis. I remember right we cut better going in so I'm just gonna feed in 25 thou I'm just watching that on the digital readout I'm just gonna manually bring my cutter in thousandths on our depth. I need to go to 312, so this isn't going to be quite as much as the other ones. About right there. This will be the final pass, and we should have our uh, web thickness correct. 
letting it auto feed in this time. Actually, I've been using the auto feed instead of hand cranking on most of that. But this will be my last cut. And we'll stop just short of there and just feed it in to right there. And we are done. So guys, when I say I'm gonna cut a crown in this pulley, what I mean is, is that it's gonna be a slight taper that meets in the center of this and it's gonna be higher in the center and slightly lower on the outside. With a flat belt pulley, when you have a crown in the pulley, it tends to wanna to ride right on that uh, pulley. It'll just help things track better. So I have my, my cross slide here tilted over two degrees, the back end toward me, and we're gonna cut uh, toward the, the center here. We're gonna start from the back and cut toward the center and uh, just cut that in there. We'll just use our hand feed down here on the end. Uh, and then once we do that, I'll turn it two degrees the other way and we'll cut back the other way. Just barely touch off right there. I'm just feeding a few thou. And we'll just cut across this. And I want that to go right to the center. Another five thou off of there. Just feeding in on the cross slide to get my depth. And then we're coming across. Now I could do this with a taper attachment, but for just a short piece here, I feel like I can set it up quicker over here. And I'm just about to the center, probably just a little bit past it, but I am gonna just take about another couple of real light pass here. I want to go a little bit past the center on this first cut. All right, first side down, let me uh, change my taper and uh, put a different cutter in there and we'll get it from the other side. All right, tilted two degrees the other direction. And uh, again, just kind of touch off there. And start cutting here. Uh, the center. Take about another five thou. I think I need another five thou. just wanting that center line to kind of fade out right close to the middle and I'm just eyeballing the center. I think this is gonna come out just about right. I'm happy with that. So, uh, I don't know, I'm looking straight on it. It needs to move over just a little bit. I'm not gonna quite take five thou this time. I think it's gonna take about two thou. Let's see if that gets, makes it any better. I'm just trying to get that crown, the center of that crown, right in the middle of the pulley or something really, really close to it. That's a lot better. And I'm happy with that. All right, we're on the middle machine and we're gonna drill a quarter 20 hole through here or drill and tap a quarter 20 hole through here for a set screw to go through there to hold this in place. Uh, the oiler has a half inch shaft with a flat on the top for a set screw. So I've got a long drill bit. This is a number seven drill bit, which is what you need for quarter 20. We're gonna go ahead and drill that first. 
All right, let's uh, drill that through. We are at an angle because I just can't get straight down through there anywhere. But it'll be fine. It'll tighten up just fine. And we are through. Up next, we got a pulley tap. This pulley tap is uh, a long tap that's made for uh, doing pulleys. <laughs> that's where it gets its name from. Usually you drill a hole through the top of the pulley and you have to be able to reach down to the hub. So uh, I'm gonna slow that way down. And let's see if we can get this. I'm going to slow it down even a little bit more. All right, it is all the way through. Let it reverse out. There we go. That should do it. So this is the oiler. Like we said, we got a flat on the top of that shaft. That's a half inch shaft. And uh, get that set screw where it's right there where it needs to be. There we go. And look at that. Just like it's supposed to do. I'll be pumping some oil in no time. So I got my other pulley behind it here. We'll put a flat belt on there so it'll match everything else. I know some people are gonna ask why not use a V-belt. I'm just trying to keep it looking, period. Uh, we got flat belts everywhere else. I'm trying to keep the flat belt appearance here. It'd have been real easy to put some V-belts on here, but that's what we're going after. All right. Uh, I think we're done with this project right here today. And the good news is this is the last thing before putting belts on this uh, machine and really kind of trying her out and seeing her move under her own power, which is going to be really exciting. So uh, I need to figure up my belt length material, get all my belts spliced together. That'll probably be the next video on this project. And uh, with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. As always, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit the bell icon to get notifications of new videos. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.